Kepler-22b is one of the most famous exoplanets we've ever discovered. This is mainly because of one reason. It's in the habitable zone of its star where temperatures are right for liquid water to exist. Which has quickly made people wonder if it could be habitable, which is the main reason people still talk about it today. This in and of itself isn't particularly special. We know of hundreds of planets like this in the habitable zones of their stars, from gas giants so large they border on brown dwarfs like Majority, to Neptune-sized ice giants like Harriet, and the planets the size of Earth like Trappist-1e. But Kepler-22b got famous not because of its chances for habitability, but because it was the first. It was the first planet found in the habitable zone to transit its star, discovered by the Kepler telescope in 2011. This makes Kepler-22b have more fame than it actually deserves. It's popular because at the time, there simply wasn't anything else like it. But now, 14 years later, we know a lot more about exoplanets. So with all that we know now, does Kepler-22b actually deserve the hype it receives? Does it actually have a chance of being habitable? And more importantly, what is it actually like? It's one thing to say it's in the habitable zone and therefore could have the right temperatures for liquid water. There's a lot of factors that go into planetary habitability, and temperature is just one small part of it. So, this video will be an explanation into everything we know about Kepler-22b, and the best guess we can make at what this world is actually like. There are a lot of unknowns surrounding this planet, so, like my similar video about Proxima b, where we don't have data from this planet, I'll be using information from similar planets we know more about to hopefully make some educated guesses about this one. With that, one of the most important things about Kepler-22b is its size. We know this planet has a radius about 2.1 times larger than Earth, putting it between the sizes of Earth and Neptune because of its transit. When a planet passes in front of its star, it blocks a certain amount of light. If we know the angle of transit, which we do in this case, and how much light was blocked, we can say how large the planet is in radius, in this case 2.1 Earth radii. This is particularly interesting for one important reason. Rocky planets like Earth just usually don't get this big. This is because a planet's radius increases with its mass. The wider a planet is, the heavier it is, unless there's some other factor at play like heat, which can result in puffball planets of very low density. But point is, of the thousands of exoplanets we've found, we really don't see any rocky planets more than 70% wider than Earth, or 1.7 Earth radii. So already, it's seemingly unlikely that Kepler-22b is rocky. If it isn't rocky, it isn't Earth-like. But to confirm this, we need to know its mass. As of the time I'm making this video in February 2025, Kepler-22b's mass is not known. When it was discovered in 2011, we knew it was less than 124 Earth masses with high confidence, and less than 36 with lower confidence. In 2013, it was further constrained, and we figured out that it can't be more massive than 52 Earths. And by now, it's been constrained to just 9.1 Earths. So, we don't know Kepler-22b's mass. We only know that it's less than 9.1 Earth masses. Because of this, we also know it has to be significantly less dense than Earth. The low density combined with the high radius that rocky planets shouldn't have can only mean one thing. Kepler-22b is almost certainly not a rocky planet like Earth. So, Kepler-22b is almost certainly not an Earth-like planet. It's hard to be like Earth when you have no solid surface like a gas or ice giant. This should probably significantly lower this planet's chances for habitability. We don't really know how life started on Earth, but our best theories currently say that it likely required volcanic activity to some degree. If Kepler-22b doesn't have a surface, then it can't have volcanic activity. So no matter how Earth-like its temperatures are, it seems unlikely that life could form here. Life being able to survive somewhere and life being able to form somewhere are two different things. A place being habitable doesn't necessarily mean it has living things on it. But this isn't the end for Kepler-22b. It's not Earth-like, but that doesn't necessarily mean it isn't habitable. All we've done so far is eliminate one possibility for its environment, that being an Earth-like planet. Whatever this planet is, it's not like Earth. So what is it? Kepler-22b takes 290 days to orbit its sun-like star, Kepler-22, at a distance of about 0.812 AU, similar to Venus's distance of 0.72 AU. Kepler-22 is about 67% as bright as the Sun, so despite being closer, Kepler-22b's temperature, assuming it doesn't have an atmosphere, is around 43 degrees Fahrenheit, or 6 degrees Celsius. However, if it does have an atmosphere, then that's likely going to be much higher due to that atmosphere trapping heat. And given Kepler-22b's high radius, low density, and potential high mass, it almost certainly has a thick atmosphere of some kind. And this is where it gets complicated. Because we don't know this planet's exact mass, we cannot know its exact density. Because we don't know its exact density, we can't say what it's made of. All we know is that it isn't made of mostly rock. 
which leaves two possibilities. Scenario 1, assuming Kepler-22b has a lower mass and therefore a lower density, it could have an extremely thick extended atmosphere, similar to an ice giant but on a smaller scale. And Scenario 2, assuming a higher mass and higher density, the extra radius could exist in the form of an extremely deep water ocean, hundreds or even thousands of miles deep. So it's either a small ice giant or large ocean planet. Right now, we can't say which one. But first, I should quickly mention its color. There's been very little research on what the colors of many Neptunes in the habitable zone are, but I was able to find one paper that talks about it, where they simulated the formation of hazes on planets like this in a lab, and found that it's possible to get haze layers similar to the ones on Saturn. There's been very little information beyond that, but that's why I've chosen to depict Kepler-22b as a yellowish-brown planet in this video, as it's possible for habitable zone mini Neptunes to have hazes made of organic compounds and tholins, similar to Saturn or Titan. But what we do know is Kepler-22b is likely not green like it's been depicted as in most art of it. But just be aware that we don't actually know what color this planet is, I'm only choosing to show it's similar to Saturn, because we do know with a decent amount of certainty that it being that color is a possibility. Anyways, I'll first explain the ice giant scenario, because the ocean planet one is way more interesting. I've been saying ice giant, but in reality, in this case it would be a mini Neptune, a planet with too much gas to be rocky, but not enough to be a full on ice giant. This is the most common type of planet in the universe, and it would not be surprising at all if Kepler 22b turned out to be one of them. We know of entire planetary systems that are just mini Neptunes, these things are absolutely everywhere. Because of this, there isn't really a reason to keep bringing up this planet specifically when talking about habitability. Really, the only reason Kepler-22b is still talked about at all is because it was the first, and the other discoveries of similar planets to it haven't reached the popular media in the same way. In reality, Kepler-22b really ceased to be relevant in any capacity when talking about habitable exoplanets like a decade ago. We know of better, more promising planets, and even if we didn't, we know of dozens of planets similar or even pretty close to identical to this one. Of course, it being a mini-Neptune, meaning most of its radius in the form of an atmosphere, is just one of the possibilities. The other one is much more interesting. There is a chance that Kepler-22b could be an ocean planet. I should say this clearly right now, Kepler-22b having an ocean does not automatically make it habitable. In fact, ocean planets like this are not at all similar to Earth, and have more in common with ice giants and mini-Neptunes than rocky planets. Because of this, there are several things that make ocean planets like this different. One of which being the amount of water. Uranus and Neptune have absolutely insane amounts of water, concentrated in their lower layers. Smaller planets like Kepler-22b are similar, but have relatively much thinner atmospheres, leading to somewhat more Earth-like oceans. However, these bodies of water could be hundreds or thousands of miles deep. This means they might not even have a sea floor as we would recognize it. The water just gets denser and denser until it crystallizes into exotic forms of ice before reaching the actual mantle of the planet. Of course, if this is the case, Earth-like volcanic activity and structures like hydrothermal vents would probably not exist, as the actual rocky surface would be trapped under miles of pressurized ice. And even if they did, the pressure at the bottom of the ocean would be so unfathomably high that no form of life could possibly survive it. We're talking about pressures significantly higher than Earth's deepest points, and the surface of Venus. Just like the boundary between ocean and seafloor is fuzzy, the boundary between atmosphere and ocean could be similar. Depending on the thickness of Kepler-22b's atmosphere, assuming it is an ocean planet, it's possible that the bottom layers of the atmosphere and top layers of the ocean mix and blend together until you can't tell where one begins and the other ends. On ocean planets like this, there really isn't a defined border between ocean and air. It's just a gradient all the way to space. So, pressures at sea level, if you could even call it that, would be very high. So, I don't consider it likely in the slightest that any form of life could form on a planet like this. Sure, you could imagine some way for it to survive, but it probably won't thrive, or more importantly, form. The only reason the ocean is called an ocean in this case is because it's made of water, and it has almost no similarities to Earth oceans, or even the subsurface oceans of ice shell moons. So, if Kepler-22b is an ocean planet like this, it probably has a very exotic environment. An ocean planet where it is quite literally impossible to tell where the ocean ends. It would be several times the volume of all of Earth's oceans, and it's possible, and even likely, that there is not a single living thing in it at all. Nearly unfathomably sized oceans, with absolutely zero life to call it home. Of course, the upper atmosphere could have fairly habitable conditions in both scenarios, depending on the specifics of the atmosphere, 
so there could be very well parts of Kepler-22b that have habitable conditions. It could also be possible for water vapor to be in the upper atmosphere, so unlike the upper atmosphere of Venus, which doesn't have any water, you could imagine a way for life to actually survive up there. But again, a place being habitable and a place being a good place for life to form are two different things. In short, there are several possibilities for the environment of Kepler-22b. The most likely option is that it's just another unremarkable mini-Neptune among hundreds, only famous because it was the first to transit in the habitable zone. Other than that, it currently has no known unique characteristics to the other habitable zone mini-Neptunes. Of course, maybe there's something interesting about it that we just haven't found yet. Or, more excitingly, it has the potential to be an ocean planet, with layers of water blending together in the atmosphere in a likely uninhabitable soup with indeterminate endpoints, with probably, at least in my opinion, no life there at all. Which is an incredibly interesting environment, there's something a bit eerie about empty ocean planets. But even if this is the case, we know of other candidate planets like this, like LHS 1140b, which was recently found by JWST to have both evidence of an ocean and an atmosphere containing nitrogen, which I'll make a video about at some point. All in all, Kepler-22b does have the potential to be very interesting, but that's true of every single exoplanet we've ever found. There's no such thing as a boring planet, and everything from the smallest airless rock to the largest gas giant has something that makes them interesting. These are entire worlds, it doesn't matter if there's life on them or not. Every single planet we have ever found is interesting, and I will die on this hill. But Kepler-22b, upon further examination, really has no reason to be famous. There are a ton of other exoplanets more deserving of far more hype, and I'd rather those be talked about as well. That being said, Kepler-22b, like every other planet, must be studied more. Finding its true mass, for example, would give us a huge amount of data in determining if the mini Neptune or ocean planet scenario is more accurate. And even if Kepler-22b is similar to a lot of other planets we've found, look at what happened in the solar system. Venus, Earth, and Mars have pretty similar orbits and sizes, yet have drastically different environments. The same will likely be true for mini Neptunes across the universe. Kepler-22b is not a good place to look for life, but that does not make it any less interesting. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets and space colonization.